Clap for the wolf man, he going to Rachel Records High. Well, that's Burton Cummings and a band called the Guess Who doing a tribute to the legendary rock and roll disc jockey Wolfman Jack and a song called Clap for the Wolf Man. That was a number one song, went to the top of the American music charts, went to the top of the music charts all over the world. Hello, everyone. I'm Dr. Donald Bevins, the general manager of WPRG TV5, your local hometown television. Wolfman Jack, a rock and roll icon. Yes, indeed, the world's most legendary rock and roll disc jockey. Well, if you haven't heard of the news, Wolfman Jack passed away this week. He died of a heart attack. He was 57 years old. Died near his hometown, in his home state of North Carolina. A new book is out. Wolfman Jack did his autobiography before he died. It's called Wolfman Jack, Confessions of a Party Animal. It should be in your local bookstores. You can get it at uh, Read More Bookstores and other bookstores throughout the area. Well, tonight, right here on WPRG TV5, we're doing a salute to the world's most legendary rock and roll disc jockey, the one and only Wolfman Jack. But a lot of DJs in the 1950s, it was Alan Freed, the disc jockey who coined the phrase rock and roll, Alan Freed, who had his moon dog coronation ball on late night radio. There was Mary the K, Mary the K, that's the disc jockey who made the Beatles famous in America when the Beatles and Beatlemania struck in 1964. Also, we've had other great disc jockeys, people like Cousin Brucey. Well, we grew up listening to radio disc jockeys like Larry Lujak on WLS in Chicago. The one and only John R., the hoss man from deep in the heart of Dixie at 15 WLAC, Nashville, Tennessee. Yes, the Spider-Man from WLAC. Whoa, whoa, radio. The 1950s, the 1960s, the time of the big AM radio stations. Well, Murray the K, Cousin Brucey, Alan Freed, but none of those disc jockeys compared to the one and only legendary Wolfman Jack. Wolfman Jack, a rock and roll icon. Yes, Wolfman Jack, American graffiti personified. Well, tonight, here on WPRG TV5, you're watching Wolfman Jack. This is a concert that Wolfman Jack did at the Charleston Sternville Regatta in Charleston, West Virginia. I'm Dr. Don. I was there with Wolfman Jack and the WPRG TV5 rock and roll concert cameras. Filmed the Wolfman Jack street party when Wolfman Jack was at the Charleston Regatta, along with the Charlie Daniels of the Charlie Daniels Band. Randy Yoey from WSAZ Television 3 in Huntington and I, we interviewed Wolfman Jack. Uh, grew up listening to Wolfman Jack. If you grew up listening to rock and roll radio in the 1950s, the 1960s, or the 1970s, you certainly listened to the Wolfman Jack syndicated radio shows. Well, you could drive from the East Coast, from New York City, clean all the way across the United States of America to the West Coast in San Francisco, California, never lose the voice of Wolfman Jack. He was there, perpetual on nighttime radio, AM radio in the 50s and the 60s, and then FM radio in the 1970s. Well, you hear Wolfman Jack in the interview talk about the difference between radio of the 1990s, which is sort of homogenized, and, and we have uh, computers, and we have consultants who dictate to radio announcers all over the world on what records to play, but when it was Wolfman and Cousin Brucey and Mary the K and Alan Breed, these guys were the guys who, uh, who picked out the music, decided what their listeners wanted to hear. When they got their listeners' reaction, they played those records. It wasn't consultants as it is today. And you'll hear Wolfman Jack in this interview talking about how exciting those early days of rock and roll radio were. Yeah, Wolfman Jack. Well, the Wolfman died this week. He was 57 years old, died of a heart attack. Tell you a little bit about that and, and, and what happened. Uh, of course, if you've uh, watched the news on the television or listened to the news on radio or uh, read your uh, newspapers, you know about Wolfman Jack. I'd like to read you something that appeared in the, this week's uh, Lexington Herald Leader. This appeared in the Lexington Herald Leader, and here's the story of the Wolfman Jack and what the Lexington Herald Leader says. Now, the Wolfman making the front page of the newspaper. Here's a picture of uh, the Wolfman. And it says, The Wolfman, he howls no more. Wolfman Jack dies. Front page of the uh, Lexington Herald at Leader. Uh, this is uh, the weekend newspaper uh, that occurred on Sunday. So uh, right now I'd like to uh, read a little bit about the newspaper here, and uh, we'll see exactly what it says about the Wolfman Jack. It says, Wolfman Jack was heard across the country, first on powerful Mexican radio stations and later on syndicated radio shows. He howls no more, the Wolfman has died. Wolfman Jack, the radio disc jockey, whose gravelly voice and howls made him an American rock and roll icon died of a heart attack this week. He was 57. The colorful entertainer, whose real name was Robert Weston Smith, had just returned to his Belvedere, North Carolina home, 120 miles east of Raleigh, North Carolina, where he collapsed, according to Lonnie Napier, Vice President of Wolfman Jack Entertainment. 
the Wolfman had been on a 20-day tour to promote his just-published brand-new book entitled Wolfman Jack, Have Mercy! Have Mercy! Confessions of the Original Party Animal. It's a book about his radio career. The Wolfman, a heavy cigarette smoker, had been overweight for many years, but he had just recently lost over 40 pounds through diet and exercise. But he still smoked his camels unfiltered and was going to live the way that he wanted to live. The Wolfman had made what became his last syndicated radio broadcast from a Planet Hollywood restaurant in Washington, D.C. last Friday night. During the height of his popularity, his radio show was syndicated to more than 2,000 radio stations throughout the United States and over 53 foreign countries worldwide. The Wolfman took on legendary status in popular culture when he played himself in George Lucas's 1973 movie in the film called American Graffiti. Though he was already well known, it wasn't until that movie, American Graffiti, in 1973, that Americans finally saw the face that they had been listening to on the radio. Many early listeners assumed that he was black. People didn't know he was a white, a white man, until they saw him in the George Lucas movie, American Graffiti. Well, that movie, according to Wolfman Jack in his book, Wolfman said the movie took the Wolfman from a cult figure to the rank of American flag and apple pie and motherhood. Well, Wolfman Jack, with his horror film-inspired makeup now familiar to the world, he was host of the weekly television show, The Midnight Special. You remember that, the TV show, The Midnight Special? Wolfman Jack hosted that. This is before the days of MTV. MTV did not air and come on the air until 1981. So before 1981, you had uh, television shows like Dick Clark's American Bandstand, and uh, you, of course, had the uh, Wolfman Jack uh, show and the Midnight Special with Wolfman Jack. Well, the Midnight Special was on television with Wolfman Jack as the host from 1973 to 1982, 11 years. He was also the host of the Wolfman Jack show telecast throughout the United States and 24 foreign countries from 1978 and 1979. His real name was Bob Smith, Robert Weston Smith. Young Bob Smith, who was born in Brooklyn, New York, cut school in the 1950s to hang out at local radio stations. He finally got, uh, got hired as a, a gopher to uh, fetch burgers for the radio disc jockeys. In his book, he says, I learned from some of the biggest jocks in the business, the Wolfman said. One of the DJs I worked for was Alan Freed, who would come on the air as Moondog with animal growls and wolf howls and rattling chains. Another animal-type jockey at the time was the Hound, who was on the radio stations out of Buffalo, New York. And that's where the whole Wolfman Jack thing came in. Wolfman says in his book, he says, I began emulating their styles, and eventually I developed a style of my own. Well, that style involved the howling cry of the wolf, the maniacal uh, laughter of the hyena, and the uh, screaming announcement of song titles with a brazen bark of a Marine Corps drill sergeant. But at the time, it was perhaps just a little too bizarre, too outrageous, too astrotic for American radio, and he couldn't get hired in America. So he went down south, he went to Mexico, immediately became the king of the lunatic nighttime airwaves. He broadcast from two border rock radio stations, XERF and XERB, out of Mexico, each of those stations with powerful 250,000 watt signals aimed directly north into the United States. Those stations at the time had over five times the power allowed legally on any United States station at the time. Well, the Wolfman's howls and yips and the blues and the hillbilly records that he spun blanketed much of the United States all night long. Between songs, the Wolfman would come on the radio and hawk plastic figurines of Jesus, coffins, and inspirational literature and exhort his sisters to get yourselves naked. Well, you could drive from New York to Los Angeles at night and never lose the stations or the Wolfman. Well, that characteristic lack of modesty, he said it was in total control of the two biggest commercial radio stations in the entire world. Winning acceptance by American rock and roll radio managers by 1969, the Wolfman then moved first to Los Angeles and was at KDAY, and then he was at New York's WNBC that broadcast his syndicated radio shows. Later, he busied himself with television appearances, organizing a series of national concert tours, producing oldie programs that he syndicated himself, and writing songs. Well, in addition to starring in the 1973 George Lucas movie called American Graffiti, the Wolfman appeared in other movies. He uh, starred in the movies Hanging on a Star in 1976, Dead Man's Curve in 1977, about Jan and Dean, who did the song Dead Man's Curve, starred in the movie um, Ho uh, Motel Hotel in 1980, and Mortuary Academy in 1987. Those were the films that the Wolfman was in. Wolfman was immortalized in at least 18 songs, including Clap for the Wolfman by the Guess Who, Living on the Highway by Freddie King, and Wolfman Jack by Todd Rundgren. This man was an original. He was energy. Disc jockey cousin Brucey e. Morrow of New York's WCBN-FM said he typified 1960s, 1970s radio, and he was a terrific, terrific radio character. The legend of Wolfman Jack is more than me, more than I ever was, about what I mean, Wolfman said as he neared his 50s. And the man, well, he's just happy to have survived that long. 
Wolfman credited his voice for his success. He said, it's kept meat and potatoes on the table for years for Wolfman and Wolf Woman. A couple of shots of whiskey and bourbon also helps. So it gives me that nice raspy sound. Wolfman Jack, dead at age 57 of a heart attack, he's survived by his Wolf Woman, his wife of 34 years, Lou Lamb Smith. He's also survived by his daughter, Joyce Renee Smith, and by one son, Todd Weston Smith. The Wolfman howls no more. Wolfman Jack died this week of a heart attack. The Wolfman was 57 years old. We're certainly going to miss him. A rock and roll icon, the epitome of what uh, radio disc jockey should be all about. Well, of course, you can uh, still listen to the Wolfman. His radio shows still pop up from time to time on uh, radio stations. He uh, just recently did uh, his last appearance at the uh, Planet Hollywood in Washington, D.C. That was last Friday night before he died over the weekend this past Saturday. There's also a record album out uh, by the Wolfman in which he sings all of the songs. Uh, right here is that album. This is Wolfman Jack. He did two albums. And this is his first album. And it's called The Wolfman. And on the inside there are lighter notes done by Leon Russell and by Todd Rundgren and also a uh, special uh, inside ladder note that is done by Isaac Hayes as well. This album entitled Wolf Man Jack. I'm Dr. Don, General Manager of WPRG TV5. Wolf Man Jack, a rock and roll icon, and yes, Wolf Man Jack, the world's most legendary uh, radio disc jockey of all time. Wolfman Jack, certainly a big inspiration to Dr. Don. I remember in the 1970s when I was working on the WBCL radio in Elkhorn City, Kentucky, that every week we got into Wolfman Jack's syndicated uh, radio show. And it, of course, had the hottest hits of the day in the 1970s when the Wolfman Jack syndicated radio show was on the air. It contained the hot new hits that were at the top of the charts. And, of course, the Wolfman coming on and doing that in inimitable, one and only Wolfman Jack style. A big inspiration to Dr. Don, a big inspiration to... Uh, rock and roll uh, disc jockeys who prefer personalized rock and roll, something that's got the humanistic touch and got a lot, a lot of feeling in it. Well, the Wolfman is gone, but he's certainly not forgotten. Let's get back into the music. This is an interview, of course, done uh, two summers ago at the Charleston Sternwell Regatta in uh, Charleston, West Virginia, and also the Wolfman Jack Street Party with the Wolfman signing those autographs, coming on and introducing the records and barking them in that, oh, Wolfman Jack style. There's just everybody to get naked and party and have a good time. Well, if you want to read the book, it's his uh, autobiography. It's out. It's in your, your local bookstores and available now, just released. It is called Wolfman Jack, Confessions of the Original Party Animal. And as the Wolfman would say, let's party on. Now, here's more. Wolfman Jack. y'all nice thing about being here with y'all is being here with y'all well man this is going back to the people that live in the mountains of eastern kentucky back where the hatfields and mccoys feuded where we're doing our best to make it in the world this is dr don bevins from I wprg man. don i know you know this man can rock and roll oh i never thought that i'd have the opportunity to meet wolfman jack and they come to the charleston civic center here tonight well charleston regatta and charlie daniels and lo and behold here's wolfman this is unbelievable here well you guys have a great time here don't you I have never seen anything like I've seen a few places. They, a lot of folks do this, but not like you guys do it. It's terrific, you know, to bring in these great acts and everything and just let everybody, you know, dance in the streets and have a great time. I mean, it's really nice. Wolfman, they're still rocking here in the 90s. They were rocking back in the 50s and 60s when you were back at XCRB. Tell us about that 100,000 watt biggie. Oh, I tell you, you mountain folks never change, man. You're the best people in the world. You know how to rock and roll, Dr. Don. And I know you've been spreading the word over there for many years. Spread the gospel of the rock and roll. Lay your hands on the radio, That's old right. man. All right. <laughs> Let the congregation say amen. Amen. Yes. amen. Yes. All right. Wolfman Jack. No, I started out on a big Mexican station back before it was fashionable. I was playing rhythm and blues on a big station. It was 250,000 watts. And you couldn't drive. You, from New York to L.A., you couldn't lose the station. I sold a lot of baby chickens and uh, <laughs> a lot of mail-order record packages and long 8K7s and uh, stuff for your hair and 
and uh, more weight tablets and less weight tablets, all that kind of stuff. Everybody remembers uh, the Midnight Special and American Graffiti. Those had to be two highlights for you. Oh, yeah, 10 years doing uh, uh, the Midnight Special on NBC. A lot of, that's why I got to meet everybody in the business and intimately. Because at that time, you know, there wasn't a lot of rock and roll on television. And all these acts were coming in, you know, doing their thing, man, and they were nervous. I had to hold a lot of heads in the toilet before they went on the stage, you know, and uh, played babysitter with a lot of guys. Oh, yeah. Of course, that was back when yeah. all these naughty people were doing drugs and everything, and they were getting crazy. It was a way of wild, wild time. Some, let me let me ask you, Wolf Man, of, of the people that you've known and worked with in radio, did you ever know the Hoss Man at 15 WLAC oh, in Nashville, Tennessee? Yeah. The Hoss Man. The Hoss Man. Oh. Well, you know he's he's one of the Jordanaires too, man. Yeah, yeah. See, well, you know the Back guy. up for Elvis Presley you know, and a lot of groups. Yeah. You know who my man was was Big John R from WLAC. You remember yeah, John, John R? R? I do. John R. The Hoss Man. Yeah, they played a lot of blues music. Oh yeah. yeah. WLAC. 15 WLAC. At that time, he had Down a lot of AM radio. South and Dixie. Yeah. Have mercy. Uh, what's, what's some of the big differences in radio now in the 1990s, uh, Wolfman? I'm, I'm talking about not necessarily the format of the radio stations, but I'm talking about radio personalities. In the 50s and the 60s, we had personalities on the radio. Seems like it's, it's a lot different today in the Power 90s. Power of imagination. Well, you know what happened, man? We got into the computer age. <laughs> you know, and, and, and the computers have taken over. And, and, and in a sense, that's a shame. Because now they, now they get into everything and they... And, they, and, you know, they analyze everything, and, and they try to figure out what age group listens to what type of music, and this they don't know that every human being is an individual. And who knows, you know, I always figured, you know, if there's a hit somewhere, everybody's going to like it. Because if someplace liked it, everybody's going to like it. Now, the computers don't say that. So then you got these oldie stations that bring their playlist down to like 300 records. 300 that's records. it, that's all you, you don't hear. hear nothing. That's it, that's it. Over and over, day after day, the same 300 that's records. Right. You know, we were driving in here tonight, and Dr. Don just pointed to the old uh, Memorial Field House where he saw the Kinks years ago. That's when they rock and rolled, right? Right. I mean, you know yourself, Dr. Don. There's got to be at least 6,000 good records out there that if you started rotating, baby, you wouldn't get to the, you know, number 6,000 for at least three months. Now, why bore us to death? with the same music day after day Absolutely. after day. But the computer says that people only listen to radio for 10 minutes at a time. So therefore, you've got to get it with the best you got in that 10 minute period. That I don't believe that. I believe that some folks are radio fans. Some folks just leisurely listen to it. But radio should be treated with more respect. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They should give it more format, more, more, uh, more meat, more body. And those, of those records, you know, you hear those same records over and over, and when you were king of radio in the 60s and in the 50s and then up into the 70s and uh, doing things like American Graffiti and things like that, the disc jockeys had the prerogative of choosing what records that their listening audience wanted to listen to, didn't they? Now you've got a radio programmer who's sitting in an office, in a closed office in New York City, and he's dictating what 500 radio stations across America are playing, and they're all playing the same record that's dictated down to them. This is definitely the age of the consultant and the computer. And we're suffering as human beings because of that. Uh-oh. That's all right. We can just keep right on rolling in a row. She's going to change this real quick. Let's don't cut it off. Keep right on going. Watch oh, no, go ahead. Well, let's at least get it recorded. Plus, I can smoke a cigarette. Well, man, we're listening to Charlie Daniels. We're listening to Charlie Daniels in the background. Tell us about this boy up here. Boy, I tell you, I've known Charlie for 22 years at least. I met Charlie way, way back. As a matter of fact, my personal manager used to be his personal manager, and now neither one of us have him anymore, Joe Sullivan. So me and Charlie go back a long way, and Charlie, the band he's got now and the things that he's doing now is so good. You know, and, and uh, he's probably the... Uh, what, what would you call him? He's a little rich in the country. <laughs> little Richard Everett. <laughs> what are you doing with yourself these days? Besides yeah. hanging out here at the Regatta. Everything I can, man. I go, uh, I probably do 150, 200 dates a year. Uh, I work a lot of radio stations. You know, I, I used to be syndicated. 
You've had a lot of syndicated radio shows because I know when I was working at WBCL in L4 City in 1971, 72, 73, 74, we had the Wolfman Jack syndicated radio series that came down, and we played that on the air every week. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> now, but you see, you know, I, I, I was on maybe four or five hundred radio stations, but I used to have to go to work every day and do things like, this is KSFO, KYA, rocking in San Francisco. And this is KRLA, Los Angeles. I know I have to do that every day, do the call of the thing. Yeah. And I wouldn't do no personality. I wouldn't do no, per, you know. Uh, uh, you were just doing the. Uh, the uh, I got tired of doing that. doing the drops. <laughs> the drop right. yeah. so, so I just kind of like, I said, let's quit and see if we can't get a live gig going. Well, we quit. We haven't got a live gig yet, but we're still working on it. And uh, it's been about four years now. And, you know, the economy's been tough. But we do have a deal now with the Satellite Music Network where we'll be coming from Orlando, Florida, from Mel's Diner, which is, you know, right, right in the middle of the Universal Studios. And uh, we'll be doing a show Saturday night starting in uh, October, Halloween. So I finally made it. It took me about four years to get back on live radio, but I'm, I'm, ba I'm going you're back, you're back on live back radio now. Back in the saddle well, again, baby. Woman. Yes, have mercy. <laughs> All right. Have, have a little yes, Dino. I want to ask you, what, what is the most exciting performer that you've ever met in person? The most exciting rock and roller of all time? Oh, Lord. Have you seen them all? Have you seen them all, man? Who's the man? Who's the man? Who's the man? Or the band? Elvis. Elvis. Hey, Elvis, Elvis would, you know, when you would in that era, you probably remember yourself. <laughs> if, you know he, if his presence was in the area, I mean, he would knock buildings down. Uh, who else can you say? You know, Jerry Lee Lewis is very the hot. Killer, yeah. Rolling Stones? The Rolling Stones, of course. I thought you were going, you know, we, well, yeah, the Rolling Stones. Well, the Elvis, the Rolling Stones, or Dr. Don's two favorites? Yeah, Elvis, Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin, The Doors, and ACDC. That's the rock and Absolutely. roll. Absolutely. <laughs> you I like any of the heavy it. metal of today, Wolfman, or the, or the harder rock and roll? Well, I tell you the truth, man. I, I, I travel so much and everything, and uh, I, I, I get into it half and half, you know? Mm -hmm. The guy has been with me about 22 years, Lonnie Napier. He's into it pretty heavily, so he keeps me advised of it. But... Uh, I don't get into it that heavily, you know, like a fan does. But I know what's going on. But you're aware, very yeah, much aware yeah. of the modern day music. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of what's happening. Well, I'd say thanks. Thanks for your time, Wolfman. We appreciate hey, it's it. A pleasure to talk to you guys. The legendary Wolfman Jack. Randy, you already did Chalky for quite a few years. Dr. Have Don. mercy. Oh, Take the mountain people. We want old radio <laughs> back Everybody again. Have a good time. Don't take life so seriously, man. It's a blast, baby. Wolfman Jack at the Charleston Sir Will Regatta, Charleston, West Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> yes. WPRG Mountain Cable. <laughs> Rock and roll. Yes.